Bill to raise uh, the debt limit, uh, clearing the House last night, 314 to 117. More than twice as many uh, Republicans uh, backed the deal than voted against it, but the measure still won uh, more Democratic votes. It was truly a bipartisan bill. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer formally placed the bill on the calendar for today. It's unclear how long uh, it'll be until a final vote. A number of senators may decide uh, to offer amendments. Uh, joining us now, National Economic Council uh, Director Bharat Ramamurthy. And um, I guess that's the wild card. I'm we're surprised the market's not reacting more. Are, are we missing something, uh, Bharat, about the devil in the, in the details here? Is, is there more to do? Well, look, we don't count our chickens before they're hatched. We still have to move this bill through the Senate. But as you noted, it's a really good sign that a, a strong majority of both Democrats and Republicans in the House voted to support this bill. I think it's a sign that the president reached a good, fair compromise that uh, reflects the realities of the divided government we have now. Uh, and our hope and anticipation is that it will move through the Senate and get to the president's desk uh, in advance of that June 5th deadline that Treasury Secretary Yellen uh, identified. I hate using over, overused expressions, but you know the dog that catches the bus, Barack, and then it's all of a sudden, oh my God, now what? Um, this doesn't solve our problems that we get the debt in the past. I mean, we still have, we still have issues, do we not? Uh, the, the, the debt to GDP is, is too high at this point. It, that either means we need revenue or we need more spending cuts or entitlement reform. I mean, we're just getting started. This just gets us into a point where we need to start making hard, hard choices. Well, look, the president in March laid out a budget that would cut the deficit by $3 trillion over the next 10 years by taking a balanced approach. Uh, yes, there's some wasteful spending that we can cut. The president thinks that we spent way too much on prescription drugs in the Medicare program. Americans are spending two or three times what people in other countries are spend spending on the exact same drug. We can cut hundreds of billions of dollars there. We can cut money that goes to the oil and gas industry, subsidies that seem unnecessary in a world where the oil and gas industry made $200 billion last year. And yeah, we can impose some taxes, not on anybody making under $400,000 a year, but on the very rich, on big corporations. And that balanced approach allows us to cut the deficit uh, over the next 10 years by $3 trillion. So we're eager to work with Democrats and Republicans on implementing the rest of the elements of the president's budget. And if other people have good ideas that are consistent with the president's pledge not to raise taxes on anybody making under $400,000, we'll look at those too. Right. The, um, one, one other thing that, that is getting a little bit more bipartisan is the uh, the wish for for more growth, for more just more growth, grow our way out of things instead of um, you know instead of just hunkering down. And I guess my question, and I don't want to want to upset you, but, but do you think that growth in government is a better uh, Remedy than, than growth in the private sector. You want to raise? Do you want to raise taxes now on on corporations? That that just doesn't that doesn't seem like the way you get to higher overall growth for the economy. I think the the proof is in the pudding here in terms of the president's approach. If you look at uh, what he did coming into office in early 2021, uh, we've had two strong years of economic growth. If you look at our growth compared to the rest of the G7, we're we're well above their levels of growth. The president did that by uh, providing relief and providing support directly to lower income and middle income families. He believes that when middle class families are doing well, our economy is doing well, and that when the American consumer is doing well and has money to spend, uh, that's the driver of, of strong growth. So uh, we have a plan to uh, reduce the deficit and at the same time continue the strong growth that we've seen right. uh, over the last few years. And we don't think that the targeted taxes on the very top that we are talking about uh, impinge on that. They actually allow us to make the investments that we need in infrastructure, uh, in, in new manufacturing capacity in the United States that, uh, that help drive growth for the long term. The, the growth that you're talking about that the president was able to, uh, to manage uh, included the tax, the corporate tax rate being at those lower levels. You don't think that was that was would it have been even better if the tax rate was at higher levels or, or you can see that maybe uh, that's helped with, for the last two years? Well, look, I think that uh, the evidence about what happened after uh, the Trump tax bill dramatically slashed uh, corporate tax rates is that we didn't actually see a surge in investment. What we saw was a surge in, in buybacks and uh, executive compensation. Uh, we think that, yes, we can impose targeted taxes on very large corporations and still see the kind of inclusive growth that we've had uh, over the last two years. Remember, last year, the president put in place 
a corporate minimum tax of 15 percent so that no corporation that makes tens of billions of dollars in profits pays zero dollars in federal income tax uh, to the United States government. We think that that is the kind of smart targeted tax that makes a lot of sense going forward and that, again, helps us fund investments that we need, whether it's in high-speed internet for every family in the United States or improving our ports and our airports so that goods can travel into the country and out of the country more quickly. All of that is good for long-term growth in this country. Also, talked. we've had people make the case that, that in terms of uh, regulations, that uh, there, if you were long regulations, you're doing pretty well, too. Do you think that's the way to engender uh, uh, more economic growth, layering regulation after regulation uh, on the economy? Well, no, look, I think it's a case-by-case -case thing. The president has made clear that when regulations actually get in the way of growth and aren't protecting something important, he'll get rid of them. And a classic example of that is that uh, the president got rid of uh, regulations that require uh, hearing aids to be sold uh, only after a prescription. Now hearing aids are available over the counter in CVS and, and Best Buys across the country. The cost of a hearing aid has gone down dramatically. Uh, new companies are entering that market and innovating in that space. Uh, that's the kind of uh, deregulatory step that the president is comfortable taking. Uh, if we're talking about deregulating in a way that threatens the uh, the air and the water that we drink, uh, then no, the president's not particularly interested in that, and it's uh, not clear that that would be net uh, helpful for the American uh, economy.